everybody. How are you? I hope everything's going fantastic. I wanted to follow up with everybody today via podcast about instrument development and survey design. Um, this is really connected to the quantitative mini exercise that's going to be coming due in our class the next couple of weeks. So I have some slides that I want to go through to really kind of talk about this idea of so what. And so now you have these questions, you have these gaps, you have research. How do you go about finding information about uh, the challenge or the opportunity that your unique organization kind of faces. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of jump into some of that content. Uh, so what are we going to do? We have uh, some hypotheses. We have some research questions. We want to test them. Well, exactly what do we do? We need answers. How are we going to go about doing that? Well, let's, let's think about that for a moment. What are some of the ways in which we could collect information about any one particular question? To be sure, there are thousands of ways to go about doing that. There are lots of ways to cut this pie. There are lots of ways to slice up our questions and our ideas and our curiosities. What might be your approach? What are some things that you might be comfortable with? How would you actually do that? What are some ways in which you can collect information, research-related information about your question? That's what we're going to focus on here within this particular video cast. That's going to be the real core message of what we're going to be talking about today. In particular, we're going to get to survey research because that is what's going to be uh, connected to the very next assignment we have due in our class. So let's move forward. The idea of surveys are um, ubiquitous in organizational research. There's no doubt. Surveys are relatively systematic, standardized approaches to the collection of information through the questioning of systematically identified samples of individuals. Surveys are a couple of things. They're A, systematic. There's a system to uh, giving them out. They are standardized. Everybody gets the same exact thing. You don't get one thing. I don't get another thing. They're actually standardized materials, and they are given systematically to identified samples of individuals. We don't just willy-nilly hand them out, but we're, there's a purpose behind who gets them. So they're systematic, they're standardized, and they, um, they are given to identified samples of individuals. The most Surveys are the most frequently used data collection method in organizational research. No doubt about it when it comes to large organizations. Large organizations use surveys all the time, and they do it to examine phenomena that are not directly observable. Look, if you want to know your turnover rate, you can calculate that. If you want to know your product or profitability, hey, you can calculate that. But if you want to know how satisfied somebody is, how mad they are, how engaged they are, how upset they are, how whatever they might be, how likely they are to leave your organization, how likely they are to stay with your organization, you need to ask them about phenomena that are actually not directly observable. All of these things happen in people's minds. We have to ask them about their opinions and their thoughts and their perspectives. Many, many different kinds of media uh, are used to collect survey data. You might uh, think about things like SurveyMonkey, but also there are face-to-face -face interviews and telephone interviews. Um, electronic surveys are blowing up, and then sometimes you even get these things in the mail. Sometimes the Census Bureau will send you mail-based surveys that you'll, you'll take, or, or even still get paper surveys. So survey, this is kind of an overview of surveys. They are uh, systematic and standardized and used with identified samples. They're the most frequently used data collection method, and, um, and they come in all different kinds of ways, right? Well, it may seem uh, you may be high on surveys and say, hey, surveys are the way to go here. This is always what I want to do. But there are some things that we need to consider. One of the first things we need to consider is, is research feasible in this circumstance? Is research at all feasible? Am I in a place, am I asking a question that is actually feasible within the circumstance or the context of where I'm working or where I'm trying to do some research? We need to know whether or not research is actually feasible. And there are a variety of different things that might get at setting boundaries around feasibility and asking or doing research around a phenomenon. If research is feasible, then we need to next know, is survey, the, is survey research the right way to approach the problem? There are a bunch of different ways, as you know from your readings. There are a lot of different ways to approach problems. Is survey research one of the, one of the ways that you might think about? Third, is survey research feasible? And would it yield valid conclusions? So that's different from saying, is research feasible? Now we're asking, is survey research feasible? And those are two different things, right? So research may be feasible, but gee, surveys may not, may not really get at what I'm trying to ask here. 
And the fourth is, is it ethically appropriate to use survey research rather than a, a, another method? Ultimately, is it the best method? And don't miss this. Methodology does not drive our research question. So we don't ask a research question because we can do surveys. We don't ask a research question because we can ask do an interview. We do a survey because it actually gets at the question we want to answer. So method does not drive question. Question drives method. Don't miss that. Questions drive method, not the other way around. Now, survey research can pinpoint and really serve a range of purposes. It can look at different kinds of areas of concern. It can measure attitudes. It can measure impact. Survey research can do a lot of different things. And there are some purposes that you might even think of, right? Surveys are very good at asking a broad range of questions and serving a broad range of purposes. They can help us focus in on specific points of curiosity that we might have. Well, some things that we might want to think about is um, in terms of our population. So let's say we're going to do a survey. We're going to send this out to people. Well, how many people do you need? Well, if you work in an organization, let's say you work in an organization that has 10,000 people in it. 10,000 people is a lot of people to, to get to, to take your survey. Well, so we have to think about then about samples versus po populations. Sometimes it's not possible to ask an entire population. Now, if I work in an organization where there's 20 or 30 people or even perhaps a couple of hundred people, we may be able to send the survey out to everyone. But we don't need to do that because probability sampling or when we take a sample, we're actually getting hopefully a representative sample of that population. And that is called probability sampling. This tries to ensure that the sample that we choose is representative of the population. Examples of probability sampling include things like random sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. Take a look at your text to learn more about those areas. Now, sometimes we don't do probability sampling. We actually need to do something kind of quick and fast, and we want to do something that's, that's convenient. Not then we would use non-probability sampling. And what this means is there's not necessarily an equal chance of everyone being chosen. So it may not be representative of the population, but it is convenient and economical. Examples of non-probability sampling are things like convenient sampling, snowball sampling, and quota sampling. Again, I would point you towards your text to know more about those areas and really understanding the differences between probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Don't worry if these words are, are a little confusing right now. I would encourage you after this video cast to go back to your text and kind of look up those words to make sure that you're, you really understand the meaning behind them. Probability sampling ensures equal representation. Non-probability sampling does not. If we move forward at this point, we we know what our population is. So let's say we, we go through a couple of things here. We say, yes, research is feasible in this organization. Um, survey research is the way to go. We know what our population is going to be. We're going to send it to everybody in the accounting department uh, because we this is where our population is. What do we do now? How, what, what are the actual steps that we're going to take? Well, the next thing we need to do is we got to develop a survey, right? We have to actually develop the instrumentation from this, or we have to find one to use. And we're going to dis make a distinction between finding a validated, reliable, well-grounded survey versus developing our own measure. Now, in this class, uh, we're actually going to undertake the process of developing our own, uh, our own survey. But I have a couple of comments about that before we, we move forward. So what are the elements of a survey? Well the reason we would use a survey is to inform us kind of about some kind of topic, right? And what kind of survey we would actually need to use. To be clear, it's preferable to use an existing validated survey. Now, don't miss that word, validated. Validated, and I might even add the word here, reliable. We want our surveys, our instruments, our research methods to be as accurate and valid as possible. Where would you find this and how would you find them? Well, you might find existing validated surveys in, in a couple of places. You might find them in, uh, in sources like the Handbook of Organizational Measurement or from literature uh, doing a lit review. 
If you're interested in engagement, you might go out into the research literature and look up the topic of engagement. Look for survey measures that actually measure the phenomena of engagement or the phenomena of diversity or the phenomena of transfer of training or the phenomena of of orientation and socialization, organizational socialization, right? And you find those things from a review of the scholarly literature. So I know you guys thought, man, we are we're done with lit reviews now. But lit reviews serve a variety of sources. And one of the one of the things they do is they help us pinpoint what are the best survey research tools to help us get at the phenomena we're interested in. So it's prefer so let's say this it's preferable to use an existing validated survey but what if you need to develop your own you would need to do some kind of question development and here are four kinds of general points that i might encourage you to think about in terms of question development if you are developing your own survey tool you want to choose simple over specialized words things like jargon or uh, or industry speak should be left out of surveys. We want to use very simple, clear words, and we want to pose those questions in as few words as possible using complete sentences so that we walk someone all the way through their thought. And the last thing that we need to be very cautious of is using double-barreled questions. The giveaway for double barrel questions, what I mean by this is when we ask someone two or three things within the same exact question. So we might say, are you, exci are you excited and happy about your work? Well, excited and happy can be two different things, right? So which one am I? So there's actually two questions in there. Am I happy about my work? And then am I excited about my work? And we're actually getting at two different things there, right? Happy and excited. So we want to avoid double barrel questions where possible, or uh, not not where possible, but we want to avoid them all the time and, and to get rid of them if they're actually in our survey tool. So choose simple words, pose them, at, pose questions in as few words as possible, use complete, complete sentences, and avoid double barrel questions. Once you begin to develop your questions, there are a couple of things to the choices that you're going to need to make. Are you going to use open-ended questions? Are you going to use Likert type scale questions? How are you going to actually ask people uh, about their opinions and their perceptions of things? And then we want to construct our survey in a way so that people are motivated to respond so that they don't run into barriers, right? So that they don't have to scroll all the way down pages and pages or they can easily match up answers to questions. Sometimes one of the techniques that I use myself is that Questions requiring a great deal of thought or that might be sensitive in nature are I generally put later. So questions about are you going to leave your job in the next 12 months? Are you currently looking for new employment? Are you, um, do you like your supervisor? I put those questions last because otherwise they invoke perhaps a sense of survey fatigue or they're too sensitive and people stop asking the questions. I tend to load surveys with easier questions up front. And that draws people through, it kind of pulls them through the survey uh, tool uh, until they get to those questions and then they're able to, to answer through those questions. And, but even if they don't, I capture the answers before that. So questions requiring a great deal of thought maybe or maybe sensitive, I put generally later in the survey questionnaire tool. If you're going to develop, uh, once you have all of your questions and you've, you develop your list of questions, there are a couple of things that you might want to do. You, you may want to ask experts to review those questions. Well, why would you want to do that? You want to make sure, if you're asking an expert, that the questions that you have are actually tapping the phenomena that you're looking to measure. The second thing you might want to do is to interview um, potential respondents and ask them their perceptions of the questions and then pilot test it. And once you pilot test it, you should ask people, well, how did you feel taking the survey? Were there any barriers? Were there any challenges? Was it easy to navigate? Was there anything that you would change? Were there any words that didn't make sense to you? And once you get that feedback, you revise your survey and pilot test it again, but you do it with new people. So four kind of general things that you might do in terms of continuing to develop your question. These are understood as best practices. Um, this is uh, what we call Dillman's tailored design method here. And it's a simplified version of it, but there's no doubt it's a methodological systematic approach to developing questions for surveys. So we're going to try this, right? We're, and we're going to try this within the quantitative uh, assignment, mini assignment that's due for our class. We're going to actually 
put this to the test. Up until this point, we have introduced a variety of different ideas, all the way from introducing quantitative methodology and what is quantitative methodology to hypothesis testing and understanding what hypotheses are up to the point of gathering information. And so now we're going to try it. So I, at this point, I want to encourage everybody to go to Blackboard and take a look at that quantitative mini assignment that's posted under the assignment protocol folder and begin to take a look at that. And and to put this to the test and to reach out if you have any questions about the assignment or any um, anything that looks um, uh, challenging or that you don't have answers to, to, to reach out to talk with us about the questions that you might have. But now it's time to try this out. I'm excited about this point in the class and that we're actually beginning to move towards research in organizations. Until next time.